A very good evening to everyone here at the Galleria. I'm Alison Tay, the Editor-in-Chief of Grazia Middle East. Huge thanks to Retail Abu Dhabi for having me here this evening, also on the front row. Um, huge thanks to all of you for coming and joining on what's going to be my final session of the week. Thrilled to be here. Today, we're going to speak about modesty. As some of you know, two of the most exciting fashion moments I've had as editor-in-chief of Grazia Middle East has been seeing Alessandro Michele from Gucci's first ever fashion show and the rise of the modesty movement. Those have been two really huge and important things, not only not just in my career, but in current fashion history that are really, really going to change the game for decades to come. So being an, ed an editor-in-chief on a fashion magazine while these defining moments are happening is something really, really special indeed. Now, I've witnessed international fashion brands transform their focus on the Middle East from a token kaftan collection at Ramadan to working directly with the likes of Roland Murray and Mary Catranzu to customize pieces with longer sleeve lengths and longer hemlines for modest customers. And with very good reason. Modest fashion is projected by the 2020-2021 State of the Global Islamic Economy report to be valued at 402 billion US dollars by 2024. So I'm sure you've all seen the Dolce & Gabbana a buyer collection and collection of shalers. We've also seen modest collections on the high street, including M&S and H&M. But other brands such as Cos and, and other stories, which you see here this evening, have managed to work with modesty in their own way as part of their own DNA. On the other hand, a lot of modesty advocates and fashion influencers have also asked the question, can we stop talking about modest fashion and just call it fashion? Why should we have a separate fashion week? Why should we have to stop shop in different parts of the store? So all of those things have become increasingly important in the modesty conversation. I'm sure you've all seen the current edition of Grazia. If you haven't, it's in stores now. Go pick up a copy. The beautiful and incredible Hafsa Lodi, Lodi has written a piece called Modesty's Next Move. Hafsa is the author of Modesty, A Fashion Paradox. And she believes that today, faith, inclusivity and sustainability are the three pillars of modest fashion's future. I'm sure many of you heard have heard about me heard me talking about sustainability where the first magazine to launch a section called go green with grazia so that's a really really important pillar of of what we do here in the region it's really important to me to know who made our clothes and in what conditions it doesn't really matter how hot you look in anything if the ethics behind the brand don't stand up so that's something that i really really encourage you to explore in your own personal shopping. And um, something else that's going to be key to modesty is intersectionality. By that, I mean diversity and inclusion. So it's modesty, but not just for the Arab customer, but for the diaspora. Um, the bigger picture of modesty that's going to transcend aesthetics, but rooted in ethics. But also the modest customer isn't one person. You've got a variety of body shapes, a variety of personalities, and a variety of applications. So that's so we can talk about modesty, but it's not just one thing, and that's what I want to encourage and embrace here today. Now, when it comes to dressing for the Arabian summer, I'm sure you, I'm sure some of you saw the brilliant chat that I had with Yara, who talked about you know, making sure your makeup doesn't move. When it comes to an Arabian summer, 
we also have to think about what we're wearing. Um, what I'd encourage you to do is look for natural breathable fabrics linens and cottons, and also search for technical innovations for lighter weight materials. There are some really, really smart ideas that um, channel heat away from the body and they're gonna be your best friends when dressing modestly this summer. Now, from our friends at And Other Stories and Cos, we've pulled out a really, really pretty selection for you. I'm going to leave you to um, have a look at the rack in person at the end of this talk, but I'm gonna talk through this one right now. Oops. So let's start here. Now I'm sure you all, everyone that dress, dresses modestly has their own basics. So when it comes to turtlenecks and leggings, again, look for those technical innovations, look for the finer gauge knits. Then you can have some fun with layering. A dress like this can either be worn alone or over a turtleneck or with a scarf. I had a really interesting conversation about body shapes and dressing modestly for body shapes yesterday. And something like this, when you're curvy, a belt would be a great solution for you. So kind of except, except your, Accentuating your waist is your best friend with dresses like this. Staying in the neutral moment. We have some business casual alternatives as well. That real tying together all these neutrals makes for a really, really, really sophisticated look. And again, can you see the ombre on this skirt? This would be really good for someone um, that's wider at the hips because the darker color will, and the white band at the bottom will pull the focus down. I've been saying it quite a few times this week, but Princess Diana is having a fashion moment for several reasons. Number one, the crown. Number two, it, exactly. Um, it, it would have been her 60th birthday on the 1st of July. Alessandra Michele's just reissued her favorite Gucci bag in a new form and Princess Diana, obviously. So this outfit, is giving me all the Princess Diana vibes. In fact, Lady Diana. So kind of like the kind of engagement phase. Again, a perfect modest look fit for a princess. This is another great example of really, really lightweight cotton. Again, this is something that you can wear a scarf over if, you, if it makes you feel more comfortable. This skirt goes to the floor on me, but I'm not very tall. <laughs> now, a heavier gauge knit would be more appropriate when you're holidaying in, this, holidaying in Europe. Again, with a really nice floor length skirt. As Yara said earlier, how you interact with the trends is up to you. This is a really interesting um, way to bring in these 80s shoulders, but in a modest way. This could have been a kind of pretty standard floral shirt dress, but with this really cool sweatshirt, I can't, don't know whether you can see these kind of 80s shoulder padded details, it suddenly makes it feel of the moment and totally modest. Finally, this is a very, very slinky black 90s slip dress, but again, made totally modest with a turtleneck. So 
modesty for everyone is a personal choice and kind of talking about trends feels counterintuitive because each woman's expression of modesty is as individual as the woman herself. Something that's really stayed with me throughout my career and, and while reporting and studying about studying modesty is the very, very first interview that I did with Halima Arden, who I'm sure you know is um, a hijabi model. I spoke to her when she entered the Miss Minnesota beauty pageant wearing a bikini. And she said to me, I don't believe in judging women based on how little or how much she's covered up. I'm willing to fight for you so you can wear whatever you want. I just hope other girls will stand up for me. That's something that's really, really stayed with me. And I think it really shows me that modesty is a celebration of your truth. So let's hold on to that. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions? So I'm going to leave all these clothes up on the rail. Free, feel free to have a, have a closer look and see how they might match up. Have fun. Thank you so much. It's been such a thrill to be here. Thank you so much, Retail Abu Dhabi, the Galleria, Kos, and, and other stories. And I will see you at shopping. Thank you, everybody.